What are we having a look at today? I'm going to introduce to you another new piece of logical machinery that's going to help us think through all the different statements and implications uh, that we can say about you know, a mathematical statement. And uh, it's a really powerful tool for proving things as well. We're not going to quite get to the proving today, but I want us to understand what the objects are. So let's have a look at what's here and then see why this bottom row is, is incomplete, right? Start over in the top left seems like a reasonable place. An implication is a certain kind of statement, right? We know what statements are. It's a thing that can be true or false, but not both. An implication is a particular kind of statement. What, what's its format? You can actually see it over there on the right hand side. All implications have kind of two halves to them, right? What are the two halves? There's a, you can even see the words here, right? There's some kind of condition that you start with, right? Um, and you say, if, if this is true, then, and there comes the second half, right? Then, then this must also be true. So P implies Q is kind of our general way of saying that, right? And we have a notation that goes with this, which we might as well put just to gain our familiarity here, right? So an implication is always going to be the form P, some statement, implies Q. If P, then Q. And you can see a bunch of them over here, right? Um, if N is prime, and uh, you can see when they say the word prime, they, me, when I say the word prime, we're clearly talking about uh, whole numbers here, right? I'm not worrying about, uh, you know, irrational numbers, fractions, that kind of thing. If n is prime, that implies that the square root of n is irrational. Is that true? Is that a true statement? Yeah. It is, right? You can think about all the prime numbers you know, uh, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on and so on. If you take the square root, Obviously, it's not a square number because then it wouldn't be prime anymore, right? So therefore, n is prime implies square root of n is irrational. So we've got the p, then q. And we might as well say, by the way, since, uh, since you just told me, this is a true statement. We're going to label all of these cells, by the way, as to whether they're true or false. That's going to be important later. Now, before we get to these other um, different examples over here, we're going to use them to explore these categories on the left. Let's think about these other categories, a negation. A negation is the, what was our sort of uh, colloquial word for it? It started with an O. Opposite. It's the opposite, right? It's like P implies Q. The opposite of that is that P implies not Q. The opposite, right? Not Q. And this is the way we wrote it. Or you could put that, um, that wavy uh, sort of line out the front. They both mean the same thing, right? So P implies not Q. What would that look like for this particular example? We're still considering P being the same. So N is prime. That thing is unchanged. And then I'm considering, is it true that that implies, now what would be the negation of Q, the opposite of Q? Root N is rational. Root N is, if you're not irrational, you're rational. So let's write that down. There's our not Q. The square root of N is rational. Okay, so let's quickly make a statement about whether this is true or not. We know that if n is prime, not that we've proved it, but we are happy to be convinced by it, that it implies the square root of n is irrational. So what does that tell you about the negation? Is it true or false? Well, it has to be false. The whole point of them being opposite is that if one's true, the other's false. If one's false, the other's true. So let's just jot that down. This is false. Okay, now this is one way to think about you know, the opposite, but there's another way you could think about it, which is this converse idea. Now, this reverses the flow of the logic. So instead of P implying Q, the converse would be Q implies P. So we could, uh, we could draw a backwards arrow if you wanted. You could say the arrow is going to the left. Or because, you know, in English we normally read from left to right, you could write the Q first. Q implies P. What would that look like here? Well, I'm just taking the same P and Q and just writing them in reverse, yeah? So in this case, I would say Q is, the square root of N is irrational. I haven't changed that statement from that top line up the top, right? And then I'm wondering, well, does it imply that N is prime? Now, just like I have for these two statements above, I'm going to ask the question, is this true? Is the first line, square root of n is irrational, is that sufficient to say, is it guarantee that n will be prime? 
Now, I see some people shaking heads, but I'm wondering, and this is really easy, if anyone can prove to me that this is not true. Any takers? Xiao, what are you thinking? Oh, we thought the square root of 6 is irrational, but 6 is composite. Very good. Did you catch that, right? What Xiao's giving us is a, we have a name for this, right? It's an example of this not being true. It's a counterexample. Do you remember that? We might just quickly jot that down. Um, a counterexample would be n equals 6. n equals 6. This immediately, like I don't have to do any other fancy logic, it immediately shows that this isn't always true, but that line, that implies line, without any other kind of conditions or quantifiers, it's saying, un, you know, categorically this is always the case, but it's not. We just showed that it's not. So this is uh, true or false, it's false. Right? Now this is really important because if you have a look here, we know that the implication being true means the negation is false. What does it say about the converse? Well, it doesn't guarantee anything, right? In this case, just because the first statement was true, its converse was false. But you'll see in a second, as we can go across the other columns, um, sometimes it is true, so it's kind of uncertain. All right, now I promised a new category, a new idea, and that's what you can see down the bottom here. If you take this idea of negation and this idea of a converse, and you kind of mash them together, you get a weird, I'm going to tell you what the word is first and then I'm going to show the notation around it. You get this weird new idea called a contrapositive. Weird word. Um, it looks like a word a German person made up because they just make up words by putting other words together, right? Contra means sort of against, but positive means like uh, they're together, right? It's like what does contrapositive mean? Let me show you the notation. We'll in sort of translate it for this particular statement and then we'll think about why is the contrapositive interesting at all, okay? So here comes the symbols. The contra part of contrapositive is that we are going to, number one, negate both of the statements that we had up before. So we had P and Q before, okay? So we're going to negate both of them. So I'm putting two negation signs there. And in addition to that, we are also going to, like the converse, we're going to reverse the statements. What's going on here? So I've put two negations and then I'm going to imply them in this direction. So if P implies Q, the contrapositive of that is that not Q implies not P. Hmm. Now you're so far, when you look at this um, notation, you're so far seeing the contra part of this. You can see it's like anti-opposite in all kinds of ways. But why is there a positive there. Well, let's, let's do, let's translate this for this particular example and maybe you'll see why it actually is justly named the contrapositive. What's not Q? We've actually already written it here. Root n is rational. Root n is rational. I, I wrote that in this negation statement right here. Okay, so sorry, I'm going to be a bit cheap and lazy. I'm going to take that. There's not Q. Okay. The contrapositive says that that implies not P. What is not P? The negation of P would be, since P is n is prime, the negation of that would be n is... Composite. Now, it's sneaky, right? Oh. Uh, it's tempting to say composite, um, but there are some numbers out there that are neither composite nor prime. Uh, the main oh. example is... One is the main one we think about. When we think about primes, we generally only worry about positive numbers. Zero, of course, is its own basket case of a weird sort of situation. But one's the important one that is... It's not prime for weird, fun reasons, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It's also not composite because it's not like other factors you can put in there. So even though I'd love to say n is composite is the opposite, that's not the real negation. All I can say is n is not prime. Okay. Now, let's think about why this ends up being called the contrapositive. This particular p implies q is true. You guys told me that right at the start. Okay. Is the contrapositive true or false? True. Is it true or false? Square root of n is rational. That means n isn't prime. Hmm. Now I've already heard some early suggestions as to whether this is true or false. I want you to think about logically what this tells you. Uh, if the square root of n is rational, what can you tell me about n? You can actually tell me quite a lot about it. Square root of n is rational. What numbers could n be? Someone give me an example. Yeah, it could be a, a, it has to be a square number of some kind, right? Like 1 or 4 or 9 or 16, 25, etc. right? Put a square number in there and you'll get a rational result. Now squares, none of them are 
prime once you go off, off past one, right? I'm not considering that as a trivial result. And n is not prime anyway, because one, we already excluded that, right? It's that weirdo number. So this is in fact true. Do you agree with that? Now, this is why it's called the contra positive. What you can see about the implication of the negation is they're opposite. They're opposite statements. But in fact, the implication and the contrapositive they sit together. In fact, they're not just together, they're not just sort of similar, they are in fact equivalent. Do you remember what equivalent means? Equivalent means you might as well be saying the same thing. One is true if and only if the other one is true. So these are very tightly linked. In fact, and this is the main reason why we're learning about this object, right? The reason why this is so useful is sometimes it's much easier to prove the contrapositive is true than the implication. And that's great because if you've proved one, you have proved the other. Okay? So we've got these top and bottom ones being equivalent.